This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Oh, gosh. I had the most clever intro. You would have loved it. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, again, veteran podcaster of 10 years and forgot to turn off on my microphone. You know, it happens. I'm Dan Zare. Thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Welcome back to another episode of CWK Live Tuesday nights at 7 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Happy early Thanksgiving, everybody. It is great to spend time with you on the show. Tonight, we are going to talk, speaking of Thanksgiving, about the top five Star Wars things that we are thankful for. I've got some Disney 100 exhibition uh, coverage from what I did last week in Chicago. And of course, your comments and questions. So let's go ahead and welcome in our friends here to the show. Mary, of course, is here. Happy Tuesday to you, Mary. It's great to see you on the show. Adam is here. Hello, Adam. Adam Young. Uh, Adam, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Great to see you. And I absolutely love your Facebook profile picture. That's pretty cute. Hello, Blake. How are you, buddy? It's um, it's a good day to be a Star Wars fan. And Father Jimmy is here. Hello. Happy belated life day and happy early Thanksgiving. Thank you, Father Jimmy. I appreciate that. David, hello to you. Great to see you. Ian is here as well. Hello, Ian. Happy Thanksgiving to you, buddy. Wow, look at this. I love seeing both our familiar faces and brand new faces. Um, many of you are certainly been in the Coffee with Kenobi family for a long time, so it's great to see all of you. All right. Without further ado, let's see what's brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. All right, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. Well, the big news today, this is monster, monster news. Dave Filoni has been named the chief creative officer of Lucasfilm. Now let's um let's kind of weed through um some of the conversation and and get to what we do know and what the reality is. First off, this is a brand new position. As far as I'm aware, um and I've reached out to people. I've done a little bit of digging. This is a brand new position. Dave Filoni is the chief creative officer. It's never been a position at Lucasfilm, but here's what it means. It means, and Dave is quoted in Variety. It's a great piece I posted in the CWK Cafe, our Facebook group, and on Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook page. Dave said, you know, before I was, or previously I was, you know, helping to shape things after kind of chief ideas were thrown around. But now, and I'm paraphrasing, now he has, um, he's going to be on the ground floor and sort of very much shaping the direction and the vision of Star Wars movies, Star Wars, Disney Plus, and I'm assuming live action um, and regular television shows as well. So it's great. I'm pulling up the actual article itself because I am not going to be someone to quote someone and not actually share um, the actual quote itself. So let me pull it up here on my little phone. Uh, here we go. He says... In the past, in a lot of projects, I would be brought into it. I would see it after it had already developed a good ways, he says. In this new role, it's opened up to basically everything that's going on. While we're planning the future of what we're doing now, I'm involved at the inception phase. So, huge. So the future of Star Wars, he's going to have a big part in, I'm assuming, based on what that says, the stories that we're going to tell, uh, the initial part of it, uh, and, you know... He's, of course, on the story group, which seems funny to say, but of course he is. And um, working with Lucasfilm closely, and they all work together so beautifully. This is a big deal. It's great news. Uh, That's all it means, though. Let's not make any big sweeping predictions about the future, because we don't know. And if anybody tells you they know, that is not accurate. This is what we know. He's a chief creative officer of Lucasfilm. He's in on the ground floor of all ideas from this point forward and helps to shape them. And that's fabulous. So, and he also, I really like in the article, again, it's on a coffee with Kenobi's Facebook page and in the CWK cafe. 
uh, what's cool is he says, you know, I know more about what creators go through because now I've done it. You know, he, he wrote all the episodes of Ahsoka. He directed some. He was a producer, executive producer. So he knows what goes into it. So it's going to make for a really great composition of things. Okay. Jason is here. Hello, Jason. He says, Henrik and I are excited for tonight's show. It's great to see you, bud. It's great to see you. So please let me know what you think about this huge news about Dave being the chief creative officer of Lucasfilm. Okay. Not a ton of news this week. That's a big one. But I'm excited about this. We're going to learn Orabesh. Let me get rid of, let's see, can I do this? Yeah, so we're going to learn Orabesh. And I didn't even factor in the idea that my happy little mug is going to be here. So good. All right, let me, let's do this. I'm going to get rid of my picture. Assuming it works. Yep, it did. Uh, first, this is how we're going to do this, okay? Uh, so we're going to go through this step by step. Here's what I need you all to do. I need you to get out a piece of paper and I'm going to do the same thing. The only way in my opinion to learn how to learn how to learn the alphabet, the Orbish alphabet or to learn anything is to write it down. So, you can hear me shuffling around getting a piece of paper. I've got my little pencil here. It is, of course, a Chicago Cubs pencil. You're welcome, Blake Weaver. And I'm going to write down this letter, this Orabesh letter. The first letter is A. Now, uh, these are going to be tricky because this, again, this is not, this is not, Orabesh is not spoken. Okay. I, I, I think I said this last week, but someone tried to say to me that I didn't know Star Wars because I couldn't speak Orabesh. And I said, well, it's not a spoken language. It is a written language. It is a verbal thing. So, um, basically, the, the, when you see the letter Orek at the bottom, that is how you would pronounce it, okay? But it's not a spoken language. It's how you're pronouncing the letter. So, this is a letter A. And basically what you do is you take, is everyone writing it down? I haven't had anyone chime in yet. Who is writing this down? I am going to be checking your work. Oh, wouldn't it be cool? Should I do this? Should I post in the CWK Cafe a thread where everybody has to write down the letter A a bunch of times? Is that too teachery? I kind of like it. You know what? I'll, obviously, it's going to be optional because you all get extra credit for being here tonight. But what we're going to do uh, is we're going to write down the letter A. And I think, like, I'm going to write it down. So basically, you draw a line down and then you draw up and down and you draw a little over to the right and then you draw kind of a slant up top. Um, so there's my first one right there. Okay, so that's the top part. So the line, the line down and then straight across and then a little diagonal line right there. And then you do the exact same thing. Let me get rid of my face. Then you do the exact same thing underneath. You draw a line straight up from the bottom and then a line across very, very close and perpendicular. And then you go diagonally. And you know, that's not terrible. So that is... That's the letter A. I just drew the letter A in Orbe. So if I was going to write Ahsoka, I have started. Now you can see I am not the most talented at this writing, so can't write and type at the same time. That is good. That is what I like to hear. I'm obviously going to have to format these screens to make it work a little bit more. But you get the idea of how this is going to work. And I, you know, teaching high school students and teaching them at the... Uh, high school level seniors. I, I've not. I don't teach them. I teach them how to write after they already really well familiar. So this is kind of be very new to me too. Uh, so this is again what I would do. At the same time, not R, but it, it seems like a K with a negative space. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, it looks like a K, but it is an A. Father Jimmy says our school is already off for Thanksgiving, so my homework is going to be late. Well, Father Jimmy, I guess I will allow it. Jason says Henrik in and he are writing but this makes me so happy this makes me so happy so i will leave this up here and continue to babble while you're writing. In fact, i'm gonna you're gonna hear me writing it down right now and i don't even know i mean i know there are programs that you can it's actually kind of fun to write this once you get it down uh, i know there are programs where you can type it notice that it's all like perfectly 
when you do the diagonal at the end, it goes on the bottom. I probably need one of those things where you can do it. See, I'm, I'm thinking very tea tree. Like, I wish I had a smart board that I could just pop up and show you. So I'm assuming you've got this, right? You've got the letter A written down. Here's a quick look at all the letters, but I think it's really important um, that we just do these one at a time. You know, and then next week I'll uh, we'll revisit this. But if I were you, honestly, if I were you, I would do this throughout the week. Like while you're sitting there, you're doodling, you're you're doing other things. Um, to get out a piece of paper and keep writing the letter A over and over again. But make sure you put somewhere for yourself that it is the letter A. Right? This is the letter A. And then there's the same that I've got on the, the old school coffee with Kenobi notepads. How fun. Okay. So again, there is a letter A for Orabesh. We've got 26 letters in the alphabet. How about that breaking news? And it's going to be great. So let's go ahead and jump into our top five. Coffee thing in here. Tonight's top five is the top five things we are thankful for in Star Wars. I was I was fairly specific-ish about this. I wasn't going to talk in huge generalizations, uh, but then I decided I kind of wanted to be a little bit more specific. So I'm a little bit all over the place with some of the ideas, but nevertheless, um, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be fun. In fact, I didn't just break them all up. I just have them all on there where we're just going to talk. Adam's number five is actually x Sign is Ahsoka Tano. Ashley has become one of the Star Wars is one of Star Wars' greatest ambassadors. I agree. And I am glad that you brought up Ashley. She is awesome. There are some pictures that came out recently of her with Rosario Dawson in the Ahsoka uh, makeup. And it was cool. Cool to see that together. I've had the good fortune to interview and spend time with Ashley x Sign on several occasions. And she is, in fact, as as cool and as nice as advertised. Uh, Mary is, uh, absolutely agrees with you, Adam. And I'm, I'm actually going to, well, I'll put mine up here now. Just so people can see them. Uh, there's my my number five. I just, you know, I just have them all up at the same time. My number five is Dave Filoni's promotion. I, I didn't expect that I was going to put this. And again, it's it's not, it's uh, it's a really cool thing knowing that someone who learned at the feet of George Lucas at the foot of the master, so to speak, is carrying on that torch. And we always knew he was heavily involved in, in, a, in a big, big instrument in Star Wars of success, but now he's in everything. Not just the Filoni-verse, which is sort of this unofficial term with the Mandalorian and Ahsoka and Rebels, but everything. So it's pretty cool. Blake's number five, thankful for all the gaming moments it's given me, especially playing the online game Star Wars Galaxies. A very long time ago, that community I was in was incredible. See, that's cool. I like that. And then, Blake, you have told me about that in person a couple of times or when you, you've been on the show. Uh, I'm actually tempted to write the letter A again in Orbesh while I'm, I'm doing this because it's, it's pretty fun. But, yeah, I think that's cool. These communities that we have are just so special. Uh, Jason's number five, Star Wars Animation. It's amazing to see how integral the animated series are in the overall Star Wars chrono chronologically. And how well they fit together with the live action series and films. Great. Jason well said. I totally agree with you. And our number five is the Razor Crest, which I love. As I rewatch The Mandalorian, the Razor Crest still stands out to me. Father Jimmy says, a real world food. Oh, cool. Oga's Cantina has great food and drinks that really taste and feel like they come from a galaxy far, far away. Yes, they do. And it's just a really fun atmosphere. So that's a good call, Father Jimmy. Mary's five. Being at the beginning of this new mythology for my generation and each new generation, well, that's pretty lovely, too. That's pretty cool. And I know I've heard you talk about this, and, of course, we've talked about it in person as well. You know, when you're when you're starting to your Star Wars fandom, and it just happens to coincide with the creation of the mythology, it's just kind of extra special. Robert is here. Hey, buddy. He says, sorry, I'm running late. No apology necessary, bud. He says, number five, this may be unpopular, but the rise of Skywalker. You know what? I'm just going to, before I even finish, I'm glad it makes you happy. I, I think that's wonderful. Uh, he says, his explanation for the first time, uh, is through a small but immersive release party in anticipation of, anticipation, excuse me, of a Star Wars movie. 
saw the first showing with a bunch of friends. I actually enjoyed the movie a lot as well. Good memories surrounding that entire experience for me. Robert, Star Wars at its core to me is about memories and making memories. And I love that. I think that is too terrific. Absolutely terrific. So kudos, my friend. Absolute kudos to you. Mary says, 1977, she was a teenager. I don't, I don't, I still think you either got a picture of yourself in an attic or something, because I don't believe you are, were a teenager in 1977. You're too young. But that being said, right on. And I was, I was five when I saw it for the first time at a drive in North Louisiana in 1978. So pretty cool. All right, let's go to number four. Uh, it's kind of weird to keep track when I, I'm do, I have them all kind of up here at the same time. The Star Wars retro action figures. I love I love the Star Wars retro action figures. You can see some of them over here. Oh, I forgot the camera does it opposite. You can see them over here on the wall. Um, I've got them all, several of them open up and displayed in front of me and to my right. And they just make me happy because it's the same molds or in the cases of the Mandalorian and things like that, they take what, how these figures might have looked in 1978 because that's when they first were released and made it imagine for us what it would look like if they were the retro style and they're fabulous i absolutely love them i if i really like them i open one up and i put one on my wall and they just make me super happy i even buy some extras and put them in my classroom at school too they're the best they're my favorite thing about star wars collecting right now adam young the mandalorian for releasing my childhood passion for the from the franchise from its carbonite confines what a wait great great metaphor i'm so excited i'm talking too fast that's cool. Mando is the best. Ian, Star Wars Lego. My brother and I have enjoyed collecting them through the years. That's great. You can't see it right here, but I've got the box of the ghosts over there. Do I still need to finish? Hopefully I'll get to that a little bit during Thanksgiving break. Uh, let's see. Blake says, I'm going to copy Jason and say the animation. I consume more animation media than I do live action, mainly anime. But all the American stuff has been Star Wars almost. The way they push the visuals to the point where it almost looks like Looks real is a real game changer for episodic TV. You know what? I'm glad. And I know, I think I had you on when we did Star Wars Visions, at least one of them, because I know that's something you really like. And they are awesome. Mary's for the ongoing stories we're getting on the big screen on TV with live action animated shows and all the fantastic books and comics. I love it. There's a lot of cool stuff. So I've really been getting into more, some more comics lately, and I agree. Uh, Jason's for all the cool stuff, Star Wars stuff, lightsabers, Jedi, spaceships, droids, blasters, action figures, Lego sets, coffee mugs, coffee with Kenobi and its community. The list could go on forever. Very thankful for how Star Wars has permeated my life since I was four years old and I saw a new up at a drive-in movie theater. That That's great. And Henrik's number four, Star Wars Legos. Yes, love that, Henrik. So I had the good fortune uh, years ago to sit in a movie theater here after I gave a little talk and did a book signing and sit next to Jason and watch New Hope. And that was awesome. So it's cool. I love being able to do things like that. And so I thank you for sharing that, Jason. Robert's Ford is having a chance to voyage on the Halcyon. Well, obviously I'm going to love that. I think that's so cool. Well, well, well done. We'll have to talk about that sometime. Father Jimmy's for the side characters and background characters. They really build out the galaxy and mythology. Yeah. The ancillary, ancillary characters sometimes, sometimes in Star Wars, uh, they get these elaborate backstories, but even if they don't, just seeing them. Like, I remember seeing the cantina of the original Star Wars, or seeing Jabba's Palace and all the creatures there, and the action figures of them, and just wondering what they were about. It just adds to the lore, like you said. Let's go to number three. Excuse me, number three for me, and, you know, while you're listening, feel free to, um, draw your letter A in Orbesh. I'm doing it now. It's really fun. And it's amazing. Every single one I draw seems to be getting worse and worse. But, you know, at least I'm learning the letter. At least I'm learning the letter. See, to me, there's only two, there's not only, but for me, there are two great ways to learn something, to teach it and to write about it. So this is sort of how we're doing that. And, you know, you can teach your friends and family. Hey, you want to learn letter or Orbesh with coffee with Kenobi? That's what we're doing. It's being taught by a real live teacher who doesn't know what he's doing, but that's okay. We can leave the second part out of that. Uh, number three for Mary, the creation of Galaxy's Edge it has become our home away from home. Just love wandering around the planet. And, you know, every time I see you and Chaz walking around, I'm just like, oh man, I wish I was there. It just looks so fun. And I really appreciate you bringing that to us. Adam's three, the original trilogy. I was there in 77. 
And these three films are still my most favorite of all. They are pretty, pretty special. I certainly can complain about that. Robert Summer 3 is bad too. Massive, massive fan of Galaxy's Edge. I love bad too. Blake's 3, the music. Ooh, that's a good one. How could I forget that? John Williams really changed my whole mindset as to how I not only view film soundtracks, but music in general. I agree with you, Blake. It's it's pretty transcendent. Jason's 3. Characters like Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ahsoka Tano, and Din Djarin. My new stories and struggles I can see and begin to make sense of my own. That's pretty beautiful. And the power of stories and storytelling. Henrik's 3 Star Wars video games. Ooh, Henrik, you got to share with me some of your favorite ones. Number 3 for Father Jimmy. The original Thrawn trilogy, it was my first step into Star Wars stories outside of the movies. Thrawn trilogy is so instrumental, right? So instrumental. Ian's three is bringing back Clone Wars from season seven. So this is really expanding. And I think we should do this every year because we're going to have different thoughts about this. So someone's going to have to remind me because I'll probably forget. But we all have those key moments. And I guess I kind of focus a little more uh, recently because if I... I like that you put that there, Ian, and some of you have too. I could easily put, hey, the first time I saw Star Wars, I'm thankful for that, because I am, because it's one of the reasons I'm here right now, talking with all of you and all these friends I've been able to add into my life because of Star Wars. But I'm going to talk about three now. The High Republic is a book initiative that's been going on for a couple of years. Uh, we're in phase three right now, um, and with George Mann's new book. And I, I love it. I haven't gotten a chance to write my review yet because grad school and other things going on. But I'm, I've said it on the show a couple times. It's, it's terrific. The High Republic reminds me of what the Expanding Universe felt like in the glory days. To me, when the Expanding Universe was my favorite with brand new characters. And while you have nods or references to Star Wars characters you're familiar with, like Yoda, for the most part, it's new characters. And they really grab your attention. They really grab your imagination and you feel like they are part of star wars and they're essential to the zeitgeist of the star wars mythology and i really like it and now we're going to we saw the cell and geos legacy lightsaber that was released on life day hope everybody had a happy life day by the way and so it just and then we're going to get like the acolyte which is set in that during the high republic and then young jedi adventures on disney plus it's just great. So I highly recommend The High Republic. Just start with Light of the Jedi, Charles Soule. And there's so much, so it's easy to kind of get bogged down. But if you just want, then just stick to the to the four main adult novels and then just kind of go back and fill in the gaps because there's a lot of great stories and storytelling. The comics are wonderful. You got some of the best authors in the business like Kevin Scott, Claudia Gray, um, Daniel Jose Older, George Mann. Uh, who am I missing? Oh gosh. There's just so many. There's so many. Uh, Charles Soule, of course, great stuff. I could not recommend it any higher. Number two for Mary. Uh, are we on two? Oh, that's fine. The, the Halcyon Galactic Star Cruiser Voids truly brought the entire world of Star Wars to life with my family and friends. Well, you know, I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that so much. Number two for Adam George Lucas, the maker, and John Williams, the maestro for a galaxy far, far away. We don't have it without him. Agreed. Robert says the High Republic is fantastic. Yes, it is. Jason says Henrik is all about the Star Wars Lego games and Tales from the Galaxies, from Galaxy's Edge, the last call of the virtual reality. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we don't have that. I wish I did. It's, that's cool. Robert's to the fact that George didn't give up on his efforts to make movies. Very inspiring. When you can read the background of him or Brian J. Jones's uh, autobiography or biography of George Lucas, highly recommend. Blake says, number two, the travel from traveling to Star Wars Celebration to going a bit down south to Miami to a Star Wars themed brewery. What? To hang out with some Star Wars family in downtown Disney. See the CWK family. This franchise is me. See so many states and locations, even here in my home in Florida. You know what? That's that should have been that could have easily been my number one, too. Blake, I love that. Uh, just I always try to incorporate Star Wars into my travel in some way, shape, or form. And it just adds more because you get to see more people and hear more perspectives and just spend time with your people. Number two for Jason, the music of Star Wars, which adds so much depth to the stories and is a large part of the soundtrack to my life. Another beautiful sentiment. Henrik's number two is Ahsoka Tano. Awesome. That's great. You can see Ahsoka over my shoulder here. Black series Ahsoka. And... To the High Republic era because it got me back in reading. That's a good point. 
Two for Father Jimmy, the end of the rise of Skywalker and his message of redemption. No matter what you've done or what your background is, redemption is always possible. That's pretty great. And then uh, Father Jimmy says, Blake, what is the Star Wars brewery? I want to know this too, dude. How have you not brought this up? That sounds awesome. Because I know there's the, um, uh, you've got the the brewery, in, not a brewery, but the bar in downtown LA where I met Colby Mead for the first time. Oh my gosh, I can't think of it. Um, I know you know what it is. Been there a bunch of times. Um, well, what is it? Oh, it'll come to me. Either way. Yeah, Blake, let us know. Number two for me is my Halcyon family. Uh, look, that, I don't say that to exclude people because um, I know it was impossible for everybody to join uh, for lots of reasons, uh, not least which is the expense of it. Totally get that. I'm going to plan, uh, as long as I am able, as many Star Wars experiences for Coffee with Kenobi listeners. Um, so don't worry. Don't worry. You You are not forgotten, friends. We love you all. I'm just saying for me, experience in the Halcyon the first time around on the media trip was great. It was so special. It was me, Mason, and my wife, Deanna. This one that we did over the summer, it was Mason's birthday. Uh, I got to meet people from all over the world. We got to experience the Halcyon together. And then we've got our little, um, we still keep in touch. We have our little Facebook Messenger chat. And it just means a lot to me. It's a great connection there. I'm fortunate to be a part of a lot of great chats online and just through text messages and in person and things like that. But the Halcyon has very special memories for me because of the things I've done with my family there and my experiences with my CWK family on it. Very much appreciate that so much. Scum and Villainy. Yes, I've been to Scum and Villainy Cantina many times. That's it. Thank you. All right. So yes, the Halcyon was is great. But let's go to number one. It's not really a surprise on my end. But uh, CWK Live, look, I'm the most grateful right now. I'm most sorry and most thankful. This is what we're most thankful for because this is the week of Thanksgiving. I'm the most thankful for CWK Live because every Tuesday, like I spend a lot of time getting the show ready. It's a labor of love and I don't mind. I don't regret one single minute of it. But I want it to be special for you. I want you to feel like, look, if you're going to spend time with me live, because it's, it's really, it's almost impossible. I've sent out surveys and all kinds of stuff. It's almost impossible to find a time for Star Wars fans and people in general who are so busy with family and commitments and work and hobbies and sports and just wanting to rest from a long day at work. So the fact that so many of you join me live or, you know, tons, and I mean tons more of you listen to the audio later, you watch this on YouTube on our Coffee with Kenobi's YouTube channel. You like and subscribe to the videos. Hint, hint. Um, I watch the show on Facebook, Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook page, and it's just so cool. Like I feel like when I'm sitting here talking with you all, it's like the main, one of the main visions of Coffee with Kenobi in the first place that Corey and I first talked about in a coffee shop. Actually, that that part was in the parking lot as we're about to get out of the car. Then we just start talking and spitballing. Story for another time. You probably heard it. But I wanted to feel like I'm with my friends drinking coffee, or in this case, Coke Zero. Not sponsored, although I'm, I welcome it, Coke. Anytime. Just let me know. Uh, and just talking about Star Wars. And CWK Live helps me to do that. And just, I, I mean, I like, I like the video aspect of this. I like that I can talk to you all. I like that I can show you images. Because on a podcast, you can, I guess you can do an audio podcast. But I like being able to kind of do the production part of it and, showing you videos and things like that. It's really fun. So that's all great because I want you to give you something that makes it worthwhile for you to stop what you're doing and follow along while you're watching it on your TVs, streaming it, of course, or on your phone, to your iPads, tablets, computers, whatever. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. You fill up my Star Wars soul. And I'm just so grateful for this community, whether you're joining me live, watching it later, or listening. Thank you. It's, I mean... Seriously, that oof, it gets me really emotional. I'm really, really, really appreciate you all so much. Uh, number one for Blake. Now, it's been a part of my family. My dad introduced me to Star Wars in the early 90s and still will talk to me about what he likes and doesn't. Me and my brother still talk about the new stuff, good and bad. And all the pictures I have of me and my brother in line for the sequels as grown men makes me emotional just because we're, th we're there together. Blake, that's great. Star Wars at its core is and should be about family, in my opinion. 
Uh, Robert says, sorry if this seems obsequious, but uh, Coffee is Kenobi as well as other podcasts and parts of the fandom that keep their Star Wars conversations positive. Robert, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I, again, I, I, I try to, I want Coffee with Kenobi to be what I want. Um, when I, when I mean by this, I want Coffee with Kenobi to be what I watch, what I read, what I listen to. People that care about this franchise and while they don't necessarily like everything, they can still put a positive, intelligent, creative spin on it and be open to other perspectives, other points of view. I was really vocal about some episodes of things I didn't like, some movies I didn't like, but I'm still open to other people's pers- pers- persistent belief in a different way. And I think that's so soul enriching. Hope that makes sense. I, it just It's so cool to me that I get to learn from all of you and see things differently. So yes, that will. So I always want to be positive. Family friendly, spoiler free. So thank you, thank you, Robert. Items number one is Joda and the spiritualism of the Force, which is so fascinating. And I think I could do a, a I think I could really, I would love to write a, an essay or a book about the spirituality of the Force. I think that'd be awesome. Number one for Mary, our Star Wars found family. Thankful to you, Dan, for creating this amazing community. Love our CWK family so much. Heart, thank you, Mary. I so much appreciate that. You are so instrumental in that, as is Chaz and our and our Coffee with Kenobi family. This is very kind of you to say so. And again, this is this community is what it's all about. Star Wars community. Father Jimmy, you're all the friends I've made through Star Wars. I'm grateful for that. I wouldn't know you, Father Jimmy, or many of you, if not for Star Wars. And I'm, I think it's so great. Number one for Jason, the immense fun of Star Wars, which helps me reconnect with the joy of my childhood. Definitely. Definitely, and Hendrickson one is Grogu, which I think Mace will completely agree with. Thank you for sharing that, Jason. Uh, Blake says, Jay Wakefield Brewing in Miami, for anyone who wants to know what I reference, the whole bar is Star Wars themed. Okay, that's cool. I'm going to let you know if I go to, when I go to Miami. Blake, you're going to meet me there. Kato, yes, hello, Kato. She's a Star Wars family. Yes, awesome. Kato, it's so good. Kato was a part of Moth Radio Hour Intensive, and my Moth story was about re-seeing the merits and innovations of Phantom Menace. Sharing the Star Wars universe is a way to see many points of view. So is that something we can listen to? Because I'd want i love for you to post that in the cafe. I would love to hear your perspective on that, Kato. Well, thank you. I'm going to give everybody a round of applause here. Thank you so much for sharing what you're saying for porn Star Wars. It's, a, it's such a fun, fun escape. But it's also a fun way to learn and teach us so much more. Speaking of, have you written the letter A in Orbes yet? Write it a bunch of times. Write it throughout the week. I want you to learn these letters so we can read some Orbesh together. And then when something flashes on through, we're like, oh, that says Ahsoka Tano likes hamburgers or whatever, whatever it says. It probably will never say that, but, you know, I think that'll be fun. All right. Let's talk about what's going to be on next week on CWK Live. Uh, we don't have a show to cover, but we've got fun things to look at. No, that's not it. Did I really not upload it? Well, don't you worry, friends. I've got it on a little push of a button right here. Uh, it is, come on, Dano, come on, uh, this week, next week, here we go, maybe, top five Star Wars toys, hey, that's great, that was quick, yes, yeah, so we're going to do our top five Star Wars toys next week, I think that will be a ton of fun, there's so many of them, and I feel like it's unfair to make you narrow down to five, but that's part of the great challenge, all right, Let's do Ask Dan Z. All right, before we jump into Ask Dan Z, I'm going to try, and I'm going to show you a quick video I did, uh, and the format is in social media format, so it's, it's vertical, not horizontal, but this is a look at me giving you a tour of the Disney 100 exhibit in Chicago. I went uh, last Thursday, and I brought Greg McLaughlin, a real base card, as my guest. And we got to tour the exhibit, talk to some of the uh, people in, um, in, Walt, in Walt Disney that have created uh, and these archivists who have put this show together. We got to talk to Jody Benson herself, the Little Mermaid from 1989's Little Mermaid. So that show's going to come out Thursday. But here's a quick little tour of the Star Wars options here. All right, friends. Hello, hello. It's Dan's there from Coffee with Kenobi. I'm here live 
at the Disney 100 exhibit, and I'm gonna give you a little tour of some of the Star Wars items that are here for us to enjoy. And these are all authentic things from the Disney archives from Lucasfilm. So over here, well, the first thing we've got is we've got Han Solo's dice from The Last Jedi. This, of course, was located in the cockpit. This was used by Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill. And, you know, it's just kind of great to see these props in person and the way they've set it up with the lighting and things like that. It's really awesome. They've got a wonderful little plaque here, kind of going through the history of Star Wars and then Lucasfilm and how they, you know, they kind of, I wouldn't say they grew together, but they're very much instrumental and shining a light on storytelling and creativity for them. Then this is a big one that I think Mason's gonna love. This is a pork puppet from The Last Jedi and seeing it like that in person, looking into their little eyes, it's uh, it's pretty great. Plus you have kind of a nice scale of how it all works and how it all fits together. And they, they just look so soft and cuddly. Big fan, 10 out of 10, if you're a fan of the cuddly creatures. Now, this guy, Everybody knows this is BB-8. This is uh, one of the BB-8 puppets used in The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and in The Rise of Skywalker. And it's great, once again, to get up nice, close, and personal and see him, see the scale. It's a masterpiece. It's even got a little bit of wear on it, which, you know, I like to imagine this is from the sands of, of Tatooine or wherever, the, wherever BB-8 may have found himself, right? And then here, this is a really cool one, I think. This is the ancient Jedi texts that Luke Skywalker talks about. And Yoda jokingly says, page turners, they are not. But this was used in The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. And there's a little placard here that says it was used by Daisy Ridley and Mark Hamill, handcrafted. Something I would love to get my hands on, but that's definitely not going to happen. But it's wonderful, again, seeing these things in person like this. And we've got... This is a big one. If you're a fan of Star Wars, obviously, this lightsaber is everything. This is the Skywalker lightsaber hilt. Now, it, this is the one that has been reforged and repurposed, used in The Rise of Skywalker, used also by Daisy Ridley. Who knows, maybe her fingerprints are on that right there, but it's great to see the scale of this thing. It's a little bit smaller, I think, than I pictured, and I uh, like with the little plastic right there that holds it up beautifully it just it'll be so great to be able to hold that thing but we have if we've been to galaxy's edge and you've got the legacy lightsabers of course and then of course we finish with first order stormtrooper armor from star wars the last jedi and it's great to get up here nice close and personal see the details see the wear on it pretty great stuff so that is just a hint of the amazing things that you can see at the Disney 100 exhibit. It is opening this weekend in Chicago. It is on Logan Boulevard. I'm sure you can look it up, but be sure to go online and get tickets for it. I also want to thank Disney for inviting me to be a part of this amazing media preview. All right, very good. Well, thank you, Cato. Um, I'm glad that you liked the video. I posted this online on Facebook and TikTok as well. Uh, but it's a quick little tour, and I've got it's gonna I've got much more detail, very f a full presentation for you uh, on Thursday. The podcast episode, it's gonna be fun. Blake says he's gonna go see Godzilla minus one next week, the latest Japanese uh, made Godzilla film. Are you a fan of Japanese monster films? Also, it's something that's been with me as long as stars. So I saw the trailer for that, and I think it looks cool. I like I like Godzilla too. I the the U.S. versions are kind of hit and miss for me, but. I like the classics. I love the original one that when they put Raymond Burr in there too. I think they're so cool. Great, great suspense. Uh, Robert says a top five on toys sounds fun. He says I won't most likely be able to join next week, so, but I was able to snag tickets to a local screening of a service in the force. Kyle Newman. Yes, I actually talked to Kyle last night. Uh, he's going to be on a future episode of Coffee with Kenobi talking about that movie and his latest Dungeons and Dragons book. Uh, looking forward to that. Looking forward to your report of the movie, too. Uh, Mary says, Great video. Look like it's such a fantastic exhibit. It's great. It's so fun. I hope it comes to Florida. You'll love it. Kato picked up the Reforged Skywalker Hill from Disney a few months ago. It's so cool to hold. Aren't they nice? I love them. Do I need to read High Republic Phase 2 before reading Phase 3? So, yeah, I would. I mean, I can send you the list later, but there's actually a great post on StarWars.com about sort of the order of these things. 
Uh, but I would just read Light of the Jedi first by Charles Soule. And then the next one is... Oh, gosh. I've got it somewhere in here. Uh, the next one is Kevin Scott's book. I can't think of him right now. But, yeah, this new one you'll be lost because I think you need to see to read Claudia's book before it as well. Gosh, I'm so embarrassed I don't have them in, that I don't have it in front of me. But I... I brought them to school for something and I don't have them with me in the studio right now but yes Father Jimmy I can get back to you on that but definitely read phase two before phase three uh Blake says can't wait to hear coffee it's gonna always cover you but it's in the forest love you Dan I love my CWK family thank you Blake thank you all so much for joining me don't forget to write your uh <laughs> to write do your homework and write your letter A in Oribesh uh, a lot of times during the week so that you can perfect it and and learn to read and write Oribesh with all of us. I hope you all have a wonderful, safe, happy, and healthy Thanksgiving. You know, watch football, eat turkey, enjoy your time with family and friends. Uh, don't get in any arguments that just aren't worth it with family. Just have fun. Just enjoy them, you know, and and just exercise Jedi patience. I know you can do it. It's going to be a blast. And next Tuesday, we'll get to talk again some more about Star Wars. We'll learn Oribesh some more, talk about some great toys, and hopefully have more news to share with all of you. Kato, happy Thanksgiving to you, to you too, as well. Mary, happy, wonder, happy, wonderful, and safe Thanksgiving. You too, Jason and Henrik, thank you so much. Yes, I'm giving you homework, and you'll love it. You'll love it. Thanks again so much, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. See you next time. Couple, couple. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Move along. Move along.